Hi, and welcome everybody to another online workshop of this RK Mentors Summit, where our goal really is to inspire you by sharing journeys, expertise, and experience of our guest speakers, and also show you different path you can take for your career as young architects and designers. And I'm David Dressel. I'm the founder of Sketch Like an Architect, and I'm your host for this whole virtual summit. Today, I'm looking forward to our sketching session with Olga Sorokina, who's a trained interior designer, sketch trainer, the author of the book, The Sketch, and also the founder of schoolofsketching.com. So please give a warm welcome to Olga Sorokina. Hello, Olga. How are you? Thanks for being here. Hi, everybody. Thank you, David, so much for inviting me to this amazing summit for architects. I believe it's going to be super inspirational <laughs> and a success. So thank you so much. It's great to have you here. Thanks for your time. Could you tell us just a little bit more about your story? Because uh, to, be, to be honest with all the people watching, we've met with Olga in person, actually, uh, in Copenhagen, Denmark where I was living for the past five years. Olga has also traveled the world. She's originally from Russia, but she lived in, uh, in Denmark. And now you're in New Zealand. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I'm in Auckland, New Zealand right now. <laughs> Another side of the world, completely different side of the world. So yeah, long story short, I'm originally from St. Petersburg and um, my story of uh, interior design drawing and teaching it started a long, long time ago. Uh, actually, I, I started my school of drawing back in Copenhagen. So this, this is the city that <laughs> yeah. um, where, where we met in person with David. It was an amazing, amazing day, I remember. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm really, I'm in love with interior design drawing, with interior architecture since I um, started learning at the St. Petersburg State Art Academy. And yes, when I moved to Denmark, I realized that I really want to teach interior design drawing since in Denmark and in Europe in general, there are not a lot of um, trained architects who can actually draw. So the majority of architects and interior designers in Europe, they primarily use uh, 3D Max, AutoCAD, ArchiCAD. And they literally came to me and asked me to give them one-on-one -on -one sessions, to give them some basics. And this story it began back in uh, 2015. Oh my goodness, like wow. so many years ago. <laughs> yeah, like five years ago already. And then I uh, moved to Auckland, to New Zealand, and the same story here. <laughs> so when, once people know that I'm doing drawings, architecture, interior design drawings, they instantly start uh, to get so excited about it and they want to be trained, they want to learn some basics of perspective drawing. So I'm really, really happy to share this knowledge, my experience with, um, with you guys, <laughs> with young architects, so with architects, interior designers, all creatives from all walks of life. Yeah, so David, it, it's an amazing summit where like-minded people can yeah can learn can get really really essential skills and essential knowledge to to boost their professionalism uh inspiration in their life yes i'm really glad to share my knowledge during this short session with amazing you. amazing that's exactly our goal and you are going to share with us some of the secrets from the State Art Academy in St. Petersburg, right? That, you, yeah. that you've learned all uh, over the way and, and many years that you've been practicing it. So what exactly is, uh, are we going to learn today with you? Yeah, so I will share with you my biggest love. This is perspective drawing. <laughs> and particularly uh, examples will be 
all about two-point perspective, which is my personal favorite one. I'll share with you the most important types of perspectives for architects and interior designers, and I'll introduce you to some basics. We'll do a really cool warm-up exercise, plus I prepared uh, some uh, some of my drawings to actually show how you you can implement this knowledge in real life, maybe for your projects, or maybe some of you will want to do sketch commissions in future. Uh, so you will see some real examples, how it works uh, for real projects, and you'll get these basic skills, yeah, and the ideas behind perspective, because I know that for a lot of people, a lot of artists in particular, perspective, it's like a woo things uh, it's uh, a lot of people overcomplicated and it's not that frightening <laughs> we just want to understand some basics yeah it can be it can be intimidating of course yeah. uh, we we can relate as well all right so people um can also sketch along with you right so grab your pens and papers and let's uh let's dive into it i can't wait Yes, you actually need just a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, specifically for this session, I decided not to overcomplicate things and mm -hmm. use the minimum materials. Of course, if you have a couple of markers, maybe one marker or a black liner or something like that, you can use it as well, also a ruler. But basically, all you'll need, the most essentials are a nice and clean piece of paper or a sketchbook and a pencil. So we will begin with a little warm-up exercise that I do pretty much all the time before I start my drawings and right after that I'll show you some examples. So this is going to be like a part one warm-up. The very th first thing, this is, you guys, like for professional athletes, right? So we don't want to overuse our muscles uh, before we uh, warm up them a little bit. So the same is here. Let's imagine that uh, right now we want to fill in with simple lines uh, a square space. So you can even draw some outlines for this. And let's draw a couple of verticals. The aim here is to put your verticals in such a way that they have the same length and the same distance in between them. So we really want to uh, relax our hand here. We want to um, do this exercise in order to uh, give such qualities to our future sketch as uh, like loose, uh, relaxed, confident lines. So if you want your sketch to be really loose and confident, it's really important to train your hand to achieve um, quite confident and bold lines. Next thing, we do the same, but horizontally. Horizontally, so we just fill in the space. The next thing we are going to do is to draw diagonal lines. And now I want you to imagine this, space, uh, this square so we do not uh, show the outline of the square. We keep it, in, keep it in mind. So we do some diagonal hatching. And in interior design drawing, as well as in architecture sketching, you'll see that hatching is such a big thing. It's used a lot, especially for load bearing walls uh, in order to show some textures. The next warm up exercise that I love to do is to draw some figure eights. So we want to fill in the space. Uh, first, you can uh, help yourself by drawing a little triangular shape, like triangle upside down. And we want to make the biggest loop at the top and we want to make the smallest loop at the bottom here. This is, by the way, my absolute favorite warm-up exercise. I got it from my calligraphy classes back in St. Petersburg uh, Art Academy. 
So you can try to do it a couple of times and then we do it the other way. So again, you might want to make a little triangular shape and we go from the smallest loop to the biggest one. And then you might want to make another one without triangular outline. Right after that, you can do some simple hatching. Plus, uh, it's really important where you put your hand, your fingers on your pencil, because the farther away they are from the tip of the pen, um, the bigger the hatch the line can be, the more relaxed and loose it can be. When you put your fingers too close to the tip of the pencil, uh, it's also fine and it's uh, actually good for some details. I do prefer to put it this way. The farther away, the more space it gives me to make some really, really long lines. So that was my warm up that I do pretty much any, uh, all the time before starting drawing some uh, interior, interior sketches. It's really important because you can see that it takes one to two minutes, uh, but it gives you so much more freedom to your hand. All right, so as I promised, I will show you now a couple of examples of my sketch commissions. So this, for example, the drawing, uh, which I did by using a two-point perspective, my absolute favorite type of perspective because I believe it gives um, more uh, dynamic qualities to your drawings. Uh, and you can see the volumes of objects, like for example, here's some space around the bar. This is also another uh, sketch of a restaurant. This time, as you can see, it's slightly bigger format. So now it's A3 format. And two-point perspective occurs uh, when you um, perceive the space from the corner. So the moment you see the corner, it means that this is two-point perspective and you can see volumes of space. I love to use this type of perspective for um, drawings of a restaurants and uh, some big spacious, uh, some big spacious um, places. For example, this is an eatery hub. By the way, this is a new restaurant in Swiss Alps. This uh, was a project of um, Salem Architects from London, and I was their sketch artist for this project. And this is uh, for the eatery hub here in New Zealand, in Auckland. This is quite a loose sketch, so for this uh, it, this one took me maybe 40 minutes to create, while this one was um, maybe two hours to accomplish. So here I worked more with details and here it was like easy breezy sketch <laughs> to, to show some atmosphere of a place. Also in terms of architecture, I prepared for you a drawing uh, of skyscrapes. So it might look a little bit childish, but it's, it really explains uh, the concept of two point perspective in a really, really good way. So basically what we have here and what we will do in my next exercise, we will draw a horizontal line. So horizontal line, it is the imaginary line. Uh, if you think about the earth, and the sky and this line where uh, the sky meets the earth, or if you imagine yourself standing on the beach and looking at the ocean. So this is exactly the line where uh, the sky meets the earth. In our cities, especially big cities, um, we can't actually see this line, but it still exists and it affects so much. Um, the architecture elements, everything uh, for our drawing. So the more you understand the perspective basics and um, the horizon line and two vanishing points on it are the absolute basics of perspective, the more you understand this and the more you can implement it in your drawings, um, the better your drawings and the more professional they will look. So this is, for example, uh, some kind of city, maybe New York, <laughs> I had in mind something like that. 
So as you can see, all the lines of these skyscrapes, they converge in one or the other vanishing point. And uh, to show you another example of a two-point perspective, I just want you to compare uh, these two types. So this drawing I did uh, by using two-point perspective. And look how we can see the volumes of this architecture building. This is, by the way, the drawing of an orangery in Adelaide. It was uh, one of my uh, urban sketching live master classes there. And this is the same building, but this time in one point perspective. And you can see that this looks more like a section. Uh, it is not as dynamic as this one. So it's really good to compare things. The same, the same here. The upper one I uh, did by using two point perspective. So we can see these lines, they're actually converging to, to the benching point. I even did a small, uh, explanation. So here I did the horizon line and you can see that these lines, if we prolong them and they will hit at some point the horizon line. Uh, you can also think about the horizon line as your eye level. So this is a level where you are standing and watching at the space, at the interior. So these are two vanishing points that, uh, uh, that are uh, here in this drawing. And it's very often when drawing interiors or architecture, uh, we can't see these points inside of our drawing. But here we just want to use some creative visualization. We just want to imagine these lines that they are um, uh, on the sides of our piece of paper. So these are really, really interesting explanations and you can compare, right? So the same buildings, uh, but two different types of perspectives. So this one is again one point and this is two point perspective. So uh, just a couple of more examples of two point perspective, but this time uh, interiors, interiors on A4 format, uh, like this one. And also my favorite topic, restaurants. I really do love drawing restaurants. I remember when I was studying uh, interior architecture back at St. Petersburg Art Academy, my favorite projects always were uh, like big residential projects or restaurants or some museums, art galleries. Uh, it was so, so interesting for me compared to like regular apartments or something like that. All right, so now when you have uh, some real examples uh, of two-point perspective, how it works uh, in drawings, let's go back to our exercise. Um, we can we can use the same you can use the same piece of paper. I simply uh, will have a new one, so this warm up will not distract you. All right. So first, I want to start with um, two point perspective in, in in our interiors. So the very first thing is we want to understand how do we position ourselves in uh, in space. So for all architects, the most important drawing is the layout, right? So let's imagine that we are in a room. Uh, for example, let's, um, I, will, I will use my, uh, my marker just to show you uh, the load bearing walls. So it will be a little bit better seen on the video. You can use, of course, your regular pencil for this. So let's imagine that this is a room. Let it be bedroom, for example. And uh, this is the entrance. And uh, the doorway, the window, and the protagonist of the room, the bed, let it be here. So we, as a viewer, we came and we are standing right here and we are watching at this interior. So this is the way how we perceive 
this exact interior. So we are standing, this is our angle of view. Normally, it's somewhere between 60 and 90 degrees. If we include peripheral vision, it can go up to uh, 120 degrees, but normally it's 60 to 90 degrees. This is the exact angle of vision that we um, can focus on things. So uh, this is what we see, right? So we see the bat, we see a part of uh, the window, uh, we see, of course, this wall and a little bit of this wall. So what we see, we see this corner and we want to reflect it in our drawing. And now when we uh, positioned ourselves in the room, let's switch to the perspective drawing of this interior. The first thing I'd love to start is to define some picture frame because I know that a lot of people, they uh, just have this fear of wide blank page staring at them and like, expecting it to uh, produce a masterpiece at the same time. The moment you break this white space and draw a couple of lines, you just feel good and ready to rock and roll with this perspective drawing. The next thing I love to establish is to put the horizon line. I'll put a little eye icon so so we understand that this is our eye level or the horizon line so this is exactly imagine that you have maybe a laser beam coming from your forehead and this is basically this level next we will show the corner so you can see that the bed is uh we'll see this wall it will be right wall and this wall, it will be left wall here. So we want to position the corner slightly to the left because our protagonist of the drawing, uh, the bed, it is located on the right side, right? So we want to see the more details of it. So we want in terms of composition, it will be a good proper drawing. So that's why since our uh, the, mo the most important object is located to the right. We uh, locate our corner slightly to the left. And then it comes the most important moment because we position our vanishing points. For these purposes, I'll use again my bright marker so you'll better see it. How do we position them? There is uh, a very technical explanation, a couple of them. I don't want to overcomplicate things and I want to um, teach you the simplest method that I was taught back uh, at the Russian Art Academy. So we simply take the diagonal of our picture frame. So we can measure it even with our pencil or with a ruler if you want to. And then we position this distance in between the vanishing points. So it doesn't need to be super exact, like uh, 22 centimeters, three millimeters. It's okay to be like 20 to 22, uh, because normally when you work on a full format paper, it's something in between these dimensions. Of course, there are some proper technical architecture methods when you uh, spend a lot of time uh, and energy, but let's, let's make things simple and use this lovely method. Next, we will uh, introduce some uh, dimensions and it's really important in interior design drawing uh, to work with space because the, uh, one of the most common mistakes that I see the beginners in interior sketching and in architecture sketching do, they, um, they feel, uh, um, they, they do mistakes in terms of proportions and in terms of uh, perspective. So since we've already got some basics, some perspective basics, now uh, let's address this proportions thing. The moment we introduce the scale, so in this case it can be 1 to 50, uh, which means that 1 meter in reality equals 2 centimeters on paper. And the moment we show some rulers, so you can actually use the ruler to show maybe 2 centimeters below the horizon line and um, 
I mean two meters. Two meters to scale uh, uh, four centimeters. So let's imagine that we are really tall guys, maybe basketball players, and we are looking at this interior from the height of two meter guy. Uh, and the ceiling here, the ceiling height is three meters. So we have one extra meter above us. And it's a good idea to mark this meter. So this is our zero. Mark where this, uh, the flooring area is. This is our first meter, our eye level at the second meter, and uh, the height of the ceiling is three meters. And right after that, when we established the basics, we can finally show our walls. So let's start with the left wall. It will converge to the right vanishing point. So this is really simple. The more you practice perspective drawing, the more you will have this in a kind of intuitive way. Uh, so don't get frustrated that uh, why left wall is converting to the right vanishing point. You will just simply got used to it. By the way, perspective, in my opinion, it's kind of magic because it's the way that we can show the 3D world that surround us and we can reflect it on 2D paper. So our piece of paper is um, like two dimensions, right? And here we want to reflect three dimensional world on a two dimensional surface. So there are some rules of this perspective game that we want to uh, get familiar with. And for example, here our left wall uh, lines will converge to the right vanishing point, and the other way, our right wall will converge to the left vanishing point. So we simply start drawing our lines, and I really want to encourage you to primarily use your hand, don't overuse rulers, because it's really uh, great to train your hand. Uh, in order to make your lines more confident, first we did our warm-up exercise, and second, you can first imagine, uh, you can actually draw this line in the air and prolong it, so you can kind of imagine how it will look like, and then you touch the paper and you draw it on paper. So it's simply practice makes Perfect, right? Practice, but I love uh, saying practice makes progress because the more you practice, the more you get used to it. All right, so look at this. Now we have our ceiling, our two walls, and our flooring carrier. So the geometry of the space is done, and it's time to position the bed. So here, uh, let's imagine that we have maybe uh, something like one meter. Um, Let's imagine that one meter to the left wall, then the bed itself, let be maybe two meters and one meter. So you can use your eyes. You can simply draw by eye. Uh, but I know that for um, beginners, for the majority of beginners, it's so much easier to use some additional ruler. So we can draw a horizontal line which runs through the zero mark and we can put here the same scale ruler as we did with our vertical wall. So we can put here a couple of meters to the right, so zero, two, three, and four. So remember our scale is one meter equals two centimeters. So we want to put two centimeters for one meter, extra two centimeters, extra two centimeters. And uh, so in total, it's eight centimeters to the right. And we can do the same to the left. It will really help us to position the bed. So now when we know that we have, let's say one meter from the left wall till the um, border of the bed, we want to find this one meter here on our new ruler. So here is our uh, mark one, and we simply draw a line starting from A2 through this one meter mark. So now what we want to do, we want to find the kind of a projection of the bed on the floor. So we simply draw this line starting from the A2 and down through this first mark. 
all right? And second step, we know that the bed itself is two meters wide. I simply don't want to overcomplicate things and to draw like one meter, 80 centimeters. So I just want you to get the concept. So where, is, uh, where are these two meters? So they are in between mark one and mark three. So these are uh, uh, these two meters. So we want to draw a line starting from A2 through mark three. And this is, this gives us the borders of the bed on the floor. And the same appears to the depth of the bed. So the depth, we go on our ruler to the left. So we take two meters, let's assume that the bed itself is two uh, meters uh, wide, two meters long. So we simply find here these two meters. And now we draw a line starting from A1 through this second meter mark. And voila, we have this projection of the bed on the floor. And this is the most important thing because when we have this position, this bed positioned, now we can simply draw verticals from the corners of the bed. And then uh, we can take some regular heights on our vertical uh, ruler, which already exists. So we know that two centimeters here to scale is one meter and some standard regular heights for the beds and for the seating, something in between 45 to 50 centimeters. So let's make things simple and simply divide this first meter into halves, which gives us 50 centimeters, half a meter. And then we simply draw a line starting from A1 through this 50 centimeters mark. And we simply prolong this line until it hits these two verticals. And now we can see the actual height of the bed in perspective, right? And the final thing, we simply will finish the box. It's really important to perceive the objects as simple boxes when uh, drawing architecture and interiors. It's all about some simple geometric forms like spheres, um, spheres, boxes, something like that. And right after that, we have the geometry of space done, the geometry of our protagonist, uh, the, uh, the bat, is here. And after that, you can simply start to uh, add some details. It can be some headboards. We can show uh, the height of the uh, windows, maybe it's two and a half meter. We find it on our ruler. We draw a line starting from A2 and it gives us the height of the window in perspective. But the most important thing, it is this. We want to position the horizon line. We want to locate our two vanishing points on it. We want to draw our objects to scale. We want to understand, of course, how do we position ourselves in this space because all the rest all the like beautifications all the chandeliers all the uh like lighting these are all effects here the most important in architecture and in interior architecture is of course uh how do you work with space how do how do you show this uh, uh, volume? So it's really important not to uh, jump right into details and textures, even though I know that a lot of people really love this stuff. They always ask me to like record a new tutorial, Olga, how to uh, render a concrete texture or timber texture. And it's really fun and cool. But the most important thing is to understand these basics. So these were the basics for for a two-point perspective in interior. So when we have this into place, we can uh, draw interiors like this, even though um, they might look like this is so simple, this is so like fine-tuned, but the template behind this drawing is actually these basics. Uh, if you uh, really want to get, uh, uh, get quick results from 
uh, perspective, you might want even help yourself and, for example, draw a grid for two-point perspective, grid for oblique view. You can easily find it um, anywhere on the internet if you simply Google grid for two-point perspective. And uh, you can use uh, uh, your piece of paper. So since I'm working today with marker paper, it's a, uh, it's a very interesting kind of paper. Uh, it has slightly transparent qualities. So the moment uh, I, David, can you see that uh, this paper yes. is slightly transparent and we can, yes. right? So yeah, we can, we can see through the grid. So the moment you got the basics, uh, you can do uh, grid something like that and you can very, very quickly use it to draw your interiors. Maybe you have very interesting um, uh, layers on the ceiling, interesting construction, maybe uh, you have some um, some decor on the walls, maybe you have some uh, pattern here on the flooring, and it's, uh, it's becoming really simple when you got the basics, when you got the concept of grid and these uh, square meters on the ceiling, on the flooring area. So, Literally, we uh, want to uh, perceive our spaces as boxes because the majority of our architecture and the interiors are rectilinear, right? And now I would love to switch to uh, using two-point perspective in architecture. And we will be, I've prepared for you a very, very interesting example. I believe a lot of you, since you are the majority of you are young architects and designers, uh, uh, I'm sure you all are familiar with a very famous building uh, which was made by Le Corbusier uh, in, in Ranshan. So this is uh, the chapel in Ranshan. And it's actually has quite an interesting shape. So I, before, um, uh, while I was preparing to this session, I did a couple of drawings. So as you can see, uh, this uh, chapel, it has quite an uh, uh, interesting layout plan. And um, even here, since it's not rectilinear, but we can still use the concept of two-point perspective. So let's quickly show its, uh, its layout. So we can fit it in a rectangular form. So this is uh, the chapel with a dome. And this is quite an interesting uh, project by Le Corbusier uh, because it is so different from all other projects that he did. Here we can see more organic lines. Uh, so these are actually the uh, load bearing walls. So these are the solid walls and you can see that um, on the first glance they do not fit like a grid, right? But still we can fit it in uh, in the rectangular form. And the next moment uh, we got the layout plan, we can switch to drawing perspective of this chapel. Again, I really love to start simple by showing uh, the picture frame, right, to, to add some borders. And they can be very flexible. Finally, maybe we would, uh, we would love to add some space at the bottom or crop it. It's okay. The most important thing is to set a space for yourself where you can work. The next thing, as you remember from our interior drawing, right, so step one was picture frame, step two was the horizon line and step three was positioning our two vanishing points so we use the same principles here picture frame is done uh, the horizon line so here let it be slightly closer to the bottom in our interior sketch it is a little bit above the center so with a dashed line i can show the center line and this is quite common uh, because in interiors, interiors uh, usually have pretty much the same height. So it's 
uh, somewhere in between two and a half meters to three meters in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, like regular heights of apartment buildings. In terms of architecture, we have some more space here. That's why I want to position the horizon line slightly lower. So here we'll show the corner of the building, right? Uh, of course, we want to position our vanishing points. So let it be A1 to the left, A2 to the right. You can also use this concept of the diagonal. So we take the diagonal of our picture frame and we put this space between our vanishing points. And then we simply draw a box first. And we want to show the borders of this chapel. So this is the dome of it. It has some peaks here. And when we are dealing with curved lines in architecture, let me draw it as a fragment. So I'm drawing this wall as a fragment. So the lines of it tend to recede to the vanishing point. And when we deal dealing with curves, we just want to uh, draw these curves inside of this form. So here we'll simply add a couple of curves. We can add some more details. We can add beautiful, beautiful roof of it. And as you can see from the first glance, this architecture, this building it might look uh, very complicated in terms of perspective, but when, you when we break it down, it actually, uh, there are the same principles, absolutely the same principles, the horizon line, the two vanishing points, and all the rest is simply details here. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you got some basics of uh, using perspective for our interior and architecture sketches. And I'd love to hear from you, David, how you're doing. <laughs> Thanks so much, Olga. I've been practicing uh, at the beginning with the warm up and, and the two point perspective of the interior. Uh, I, I just want to thank you for showing us so great examples. You have a bunch of commissioned work and like fully professional marker colored interior and also exterior sketches. So thanks for showing us so many examples. I think that's, you know, examples lead. So uh, it was awesome to see that. And also just the step-by-step -step process from going, okay, I have the picture plan, horizon line, vention points. Then I have the simple measuring um, yeah. methodology, which is something that I've been struggling with too, uh, with mm -hmm. the being precise in perspective with, uh, the foreshortening and, and the depth that is um, kind of hard to just imagine if, if you don't have the experience, if you don't know the principles behind it, behind the constructive geometry, yeah. uh, it, it's hard to put it together just on spot. So this is a great method and very simple and fast, most importantly, which is a great part of sketching as, as a process of coming up with ideas and, and using it in the process. So I want to say thank you so much. I made some, I made some uh, notes <laughs> myself. Uh, wow. Let's continue. You have also something extra for free to offer <laughs> following up on these uh, interior perspective. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I've prepared a um, complete beginner level online course and it's completely free. Uh, and I call it a seven days perspective challenge where we dive even deeper into these concepts of perspective. I go um, into the basics, not only of one point perspective, but also uh, two point, one point. So the most important types of perspective that we touched upon today. And uh, there I've prepared a couple of short and sweet uh, tutorials, short videos. Uh, each of them is about 10 minutes long and there are seven of them. So each one of them is 
literally packed with essential knowledge and information so you can get even more familiar you can get in love with perspective drawing and uh, i hope that you'll feel even more inspired after going through this course to implement this knowledge of perspective into your architecture sketch into interior design drawings yeah, so I can't wait to see you inside the course. <laughs> yes, and it's completely free. So there are, for now, there are more than 10,000 people who, who wow. already enrolled in it. So I, I got uh, new testimonials literally every day. So people really getting a lot of fun during these lessons because I decided to kind of uh, add more gamification to perspective to such like complex topic for a lot of people. Mm. So I, I make it more like playful, fun, with really fun exercises. So I it really sounds... want you guys to, yeah, to enjoy the um, drawing process and not to get frustrated because of like some perspective rules that might seem over, over, overwhelming, overcomplicated. <laughs> oh, yeah. That sounds absolutely amazing. Um, you can check the links around the video on the on the website I, I believe it will be on the right side to get absolutely for free this more in-depth uh perspective challenge course from from olga and if you uh say if i'd like to go really deep on perspective and i want to know almost everything and i want to use color markers do you have also something to offer for that yeah, so if you really want to dive deep into interior design drawing, into marker technique in particular, if you, for example, want to draw sketch commissions, so if you are an interior designer or an architecture architect or interior design architecture student, and you want to make really professional uh, interior design drawings, I welcome you to join my uh, course base which covers all the basics all the techniques that you need to implement this knowledge into your interior drawings uh, to make it professional yeah and of course to master marker technique so good so good you can find also the link for for the base uh, course on interior design sketching from Olga on this on this website with a huge discount from Olga. She's very generous. Let me know, let us all know where we can best find you, get in touch with you, learn more about you online, on Instagram, on YouTube. So I think the go-to is um, my website. It's schoolofsketching.com. You can find uh, very helpful blog articles there uh, because I run a blog uh, on interior sketching, on perspective drawing, on architecture sketching. Uh, so you can go there. And of course, uh, follow me on social media like YouTube and Instagram. It's also School of Sketching where I publish. On Instagram, I publish uh, almost daily content content and on YouTube I publish new tutorial uh, every week so <laughs> to, to keep you like informed inspired to share my um, experience uh, my new projects so social media and my website yeah school of sketching <laughs> amazing fantastic uh, you can find also the links here on the website for all the social media Instagram YouTube school of sketching.com is the main website Make sure to check out all the all the links and freebies for um, Olga's courses. And thank you for watching. I hope you find this very useful, helpful for your sketching of perspective and interior. And please let us know what was the main key takeaway for you and share it on social media using the hashtag ArchiMentors. And that's it. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Olga, for sharing everything with us today. It's been more than we could hope for. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to hear what was the biggest takeaway for, for our viewers today. Amazing. Yes, please share it with us. Share it also on the Facebook group if you're in. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in another workshop. Cheers. <laughs>